Back into the show with football. Doc Cox. Today we're checking out an exciting new lighting fixture from GVM, AKA Great Video Makers. This is the SD650B Pro. It is a 650 watt bicolor Bowens mount mono light with a very competitive price tag of only 999 US dollars. Colored temperatures ranging from 2700 to 6800 Kelvin, features stepless dimming from zero to 100 at 0.1% increments four different dimming curves, an awesome feature of source matching to any other lighting on your sets, seamless integrated app control, studio settings with a dual fan system that allows for three different fan controls, DMX capabilities, 12 different special effects presets, which are all customizable in speed and color temp, a professional build quality, the 650B Pro is all aluminum construction with solid cable connections. And my favorite feature is that it can be powered off of typical 14 volt V-mount batteries. You know, back in 2018, GVM didn't really seem to be a strong competitor against popular brands such as Aperture or Godox. But now with the launch of their new Pro Bowens mount fixtures, they are definitely entering the arena for indie filmmakers in 2023. Their entire line of Pro mono lights are all bicolor and they have plenty of options to choose from, starting at 200 watts all the way up to this big boy, the 650. Now, if you're new here and you have no idea how I do reviews, I keep it very real. I am a working freelance DP and gaffer right here in Los Angeles under my own LLC, Dog Times Productions. And only 25% of the time do we end up with situations like this where I agree for the company to send me the product. Does that affect my review? Not one bit. And I do go very in depth and I get quite technical with my color meter here. So this video does have timestamp chapters if you're looking for anything in particular. First up is a test I did outdoors where I had to use five stops of ND in camera. Let's see how this GVM 650B holds up when it comes to battling the sun. Okay, so this is a circumstance where there's no lights on obviously. And in the background here, I'm currently exposing for what's going on deep in the background. I'm about four stops under. I had to put the five stop ND on to preserve what's going on behind me. And one nice thing is I can use my Siconic and I know without any lights on that we're sitting at 6100 here. Also, I should mention the microphone that I'm using for this is this little new microphone set also made by GVM. Uh, we'll have a separate video dedicated to that. All right, so we have our light on, the app immediately connected. I have it only on 40% right now, and uh, the CCT has changed to 6100 Kelvin. So with five stops right now, I am getting a 2.8 to camera. Directly out of that thing, I am getting a 2.8 split. Yeah, she's pretty hot. With S-Log3, S-Gamut3 Cine, looking at the EL zone, I am getting, uh, my skin tones are about one stop over between half a stop and one stop over, which is actually pretty decent uh, exposure considering the S-Log 3S Gamut 3 Cine. The color doesn't look very accurate though. So let me see what we're actually getting out of this thing. And this is quite harsh. So trust me, this is not what I would do. We're just doing the extreme thing here before we start softening the light, something that would be more pleasant to the eyes. Even though that I have set the light to 6100, it's 5864 exact, but we'll say it's giving me 59. So it is fairly close to that 6100. Um, I want to soften this up. You know, I would use at least a four and a half foot dome, uh, but this is the one that GVM sent me. Uh, it's pretty good quality. I'm not going to use the eight crate grid, uh, but I do have, have it double broken. So GVM does include a smaller diffusion. And then this one, the inner one is probably a, a quarter grid. And this outside one is probably half grid. So I'm gonna throw this on and it would be a little bit more realistic to what I would do on a, on a real thing. This isn't too bad. Um, the one thing I know I can do right away is give a little bit more output out of this. So again, I had to turn the light off, obviously, before I took the reflector off and put the dome on. Instantly connects back to the app. No issues there. So this is at 100%. Now camera settings are obviously ISO 800 at 24 frames per second. We'll see what we're getting out of this. The Siconic knows that I have five stops of ND. And with those settings, I am getting an F4 with the ND five stops or AKA 900 foot candles. 
this light is maxed out all the way. Quarter grid and the half grid cloth on the little tiny light dome, even double broken like that, we're able to get this kind of news look. This is pretty popular what they do on news broadcasts, just one light blasting right in the person's face. This isn't like what you would see in Oppenheimer or something like that, you know, it's nothing cinematic about it. Uh, but again, we're just doing this to see how much real output you can get out of this thing, even when it's double broken with both those diffusions. The diffusion cloths are definitely going to affect our color temperature. So let's see where that's sitting at now. It dropped a little tiny bit. So now it's giving me 5763. We can just round up and say, okay, it's giving me 5800 Kelvin. We're still pushing a quarter green and we're even pushing a little bit more towards the blue side. So I'm going to adjust my internal color temperature to just get this as neutral as possible. Made some slight adjustments to the internal camera's white balance. I added a quarter green. I went a little bit on the blue side just to uh, try to get it closer to 6100 Kelvin. Even though the ballast says 6100, it's getting skewed a little bit. That's pretty common for cheap, budget-friendly LED panels or mono lights. But this is what you're getting even at 100% with five stops of ND. You could balance to a hot, hot background. Even though as newsy or fake as this looks, um, I think we are getting pretty decent exposure on the skin and everything. V-mount power. This light can run off of two 14-volt V-mount batteries, as opposed to the more expensive 26 volts. Yet there is a trade-off when using V-mount power. It limits your output by 50%, making this 650 a 325 watt light. But considering whatever circumstances you might find yourself in, that could definitely be a decent trade-off. For all of my one-man bands out there, just think how cool it would be if you found yourself out in the middle of nowhere, but still able to have a 325 watt bicolor light that you can run off of two tiny nano V-mount batteries. I mean, that's pretty awesome. I can't even run my Forza 500 off of 14 volt V-mounts. So now let's talk about the weight. As I said before, it is a solid all aluminum construction. What that means is the fixture alone weighs nearly 15 pounds. To put that into perspective for you, this 650B is three times the weight of this Nanlite Forza 500. And it's about three pounds heavier than an Aperture 600X. So the light is beefy. And I only bring that up because it may be limiting for different rigging scenarios. For instance, I can never do what I do with this Forza 500, which is attach a big lantern to the light and then put it on a modern studio equipment telescoping combo boom arm and fly it over the heads of talent. Like what I did on this Andy Grammer music video or this k and car commercial. Depending on how far you need to extend the boom arm with this 15 pound GVM light, chances are it would be pretty unsafe. You would definitely need a menace arm, which requires a lot more rigging and manpower. Does that matter for you and whatever work you're doing? I don't know, it's just something to keep in the back of your mind. But don't get it twisted, I absolutely love how well built this GVM light is. I'm just bringing all this to the forefront because if you are new to the filmmaking world or you know fixtures of this caliber, I would highly recommend investing in a combo stand. GVM sent me one of their C stands to use with this light and I appreciate that, but I personally am not a fan of using C stands with my lights. It's like I tell my crew, C stands are for modifiers like flags and frames. Lights like these, especially like these, go on combo stands or maybe even sometimes baby stands if you have something smaller like the Forza. If you don't know what baby stands are, they're the ones that are made out of all stainless steel. So obviously if you're new to the game and you don't have those, then yeah, you will definitely have to waste one of your C stands to rig this light. Now, as I mentioned in the opening sequence, there are three different options for fan control. So I did a quick test with a shotgun mic. This is on Smart and I do have the Deity shotgun microphone. It's actually a really good microphone. So now I'm gonna jump too high. Okay, that's with the fan set on high at about three and a half feet. So the DOT shotgun microphone is three and a half feet from the fixture, and that's what the fan set too high. Now I'm going to change to silent, and the output just cut by like easily half, if not more. And now I'm gonna go back to high. Output jumped back up, fan went high. Now I'm gonna go to smart. 
Notice the output did not change at all when I put it on smart mode. We gotta do a brief pause break so I can give a shout out to the only sponsor of my channel, which is the Dog Times Patreon. That's my own virtual clubhouse where I share behind the scenes and cinematography breakdowns on all the jobs I do, and we talk shop daily in our private Discord. So shout out to all members of my Patreon, and special thanks to this month's Patreon producers, Jonathan Arroyo, Scott Myers, and Akula Productions. So now we're gonna compare this 650B Pro to a couple other really popular lights. But before we do get into the weeds, talking about foot candles and lux, I wanna put all these numbers into perspective for you. Let's say we were shooting an interior scene where we didn't have to worry about windows and we had our camera settings at 24 frames per second, 180 degree shutter at ISO 800. And we set the lens to an F2.8 and we have a quarter pro mist on. And then we want to soften our light with, say, a magic cloth, which decreases the light's output by two and a half stops. With all of these parameters in place, what we need for proper middle gray exposure on our talent's face is 96 foot candles or 1,033 lux. So just remember those numbers. Now let's get into the comparisons. Keep in mind, I take all of my readings from a three meter distance. Three meters, in my opinion, is just more practical to real world use. All of the lights were set to 5600 Kelvin with their hyper reflectors attached. First up is the infamous ProLite Orion 675. This isn't exactly a fair comparison because the Orion is pulling 25 watts more power and it is a full spectrum light, meaning it is RGBA CL and has a very wide CCT range of 1800 to 20,000 Kelvin. So this is a creme de la creme industry standard light. And as such, you will pay $3,500 for the Orion 675. For output though, what you will get is 685 foot candles or 7,373 lux. So now the middle tier contender, the Aperture 600X. This is a more fair comparison because the Aperture is not full spectrum like the Orion and it is only bicolor. The 600X is currently selling for 2000 US dollars, so it is double the price of the GVM 650B. When the 600X is set to 5600 Kelvin from that same three meter distance, you will get 521 foot candles or 5610 lux. So the Orion is 31% brighter. But now our main contender, the GVM 650B Pro. With its hyper reflector on from that same three meter distance, you will get 538 foot candles or 5,791 lux, which is actually 3% brighter than the Aperture 600X. The main takeaway here is that all three of these lights are more than capable of having a very strong key light for any controlled interior environment. They are providing you with over four times the amount of output that you would need in most interior settings that aren't having to battle windows. And keep in mind, the Aperture is twice the price of the GVM. However, what that $2,000 is buying you is weather sealing. The 600X can handle light rain and water spray. So for some of you on the other side of the country or the world, that may be worth the extra grand. Or you're just one of those folks that just need all of your lights to be the same exact brand. And I get it, not everyone can afford a Sekonic 800 or just don't feel like they need one. Or the real reason being you just love using the Citus Link app. I myself have had pretty unsatisfying experiences using that Citus Link app. However, the GVM app connected immediately and I didn't have to reset it the next day. But you know what I like the most about GVM's app? It didn't ask me for my email address and it certainly didn't require me to create a password with a little private account just to change the settings on my light. The takeaway here is yes, the GVM app is awesome, it's fast, it's reliable, and it doesn't annoy the hell out of me. And it does everything that the ballast control box does. The reality is the most satisfying feature of an app like the GVM app is that it does not slow me down. And hey, it's still pretty advanced. There's a lot more options in there, like a full editing sequence menu for setting up mesh groups and lighting effect programs. And it even gives you the option to build a lighting setup and save it to share with a team. Okay, so now we are going to get super nerdy. And we're gonna look at the colorimetry of this 650B Pro and see what it's doing as far as color rendering and skin tones. 
But also, GVM claims that this light is capable of maintaining the same exact level of brightness at any color temperature. And you already know I tested that with my Sekonic 800, so let's dive in and look at the results. What we're looking at here is the main readout off of the Sekonic when the light was set to 5600 Kelvin. So anytime where it says reference CCT, 5600, obviously that's what I had the light set to. And you can see what it actually gave us was 5375. So it's a little bit off, but not too bad. Nothing where you would need to have like a gel or something on the lamp. However, what we should be paying attention to is the delta UV curve. And there you'll notice it's negative. So anytime that the delta UV curve is negative, that's signifying a magenta shift in the light. If it was positive, it would be signifying a green shift, right? It works the same way as tint. So because of that, in order to correct that, um, the Sekonic is showing where you would have to go half green in camera to make up for the magenta shift that the light has when it's set to 5600 Kelvin. Now, if we look at the CRI, this is something I talk about all the time. I don't really care about CRI average because it doesn't include the colors that really matter. And that is channels R9 through R15, right? We've talked about this plenty in the past. I don't know why CRI doesn't include R9 through R15, but it just doesn't. So that's why a lot of guys have gravitated away from CRI numbers. However, it's still good to look at these because we wanna pay attention to R9 through R15 because the, these are the colors that are most represented in real world, specifically channels R9, R13, and R15. Those are our skin tone colors. R9 is pretty decent. R15's good. R13's good as well. However, look at this one color here, R12. Now, this is a pattern we'll see through all different color temps with the GVM 650B. This R12 channel significantly hurts. Maybe that's why the light is consistently shifting towards magenta. The only time it doesn't shift towards magenta is when it is at the lowest setting, which is 2700 Kelvin. So here is when the light is set to 2700 Kelvin. It was actually giving us 2607, right? So fairly close, but still, if you needed it exactly 2700 Kelvin, you would have to add a quarter CTB gel to the light, right? So it's a pretty significant difference when we get into the tungsten world. This is a thing, LED lights are, are hurting pretty bad when it comes to trying to match tungsten sources, right? We still have a little bit of ways to go with technology, but as you'll soon see, this is where lights like the ProLite or the Roscoe fixtures, which are RGBACL, that's their advantage, right? RGBACL, the A standing for amber, C standing for cyan, and L standing for lime. That gives it extra diodes and little chips I don't know all the science behind it, but it's giving more access to colors so they can achieve better things and achieve a, a better color fidelity overall. And we'll look at the Roscoe in a minute here and see how it fared when I tested the Roscoe at 2700, right? But for now, we'll just stay on this. As you'll see, the UV delta curve is now pushing positive, which means that yes, now you have to add a half magenta in camera to make up for the green that you get when the light is set to 2700 Kelvin. If we look at the CRI readings there, this is when the light is set to 2700 Kelvin. Our channel R9 is really, really low. This is really, really bad. So, and you also notice uh, R13 isn't too bad, but R15 is kind of low too. You know, ideally you want these numbers at least hitting 95. So because that R9 channel is so low, I wouldn't really want to set this light at 2700 and have it as my key light on talent because I know the skin tones are gonna get really weird really quick. So now this is the readout when the light was set to 3200 Kelvin. The actual reading was 3114 and there you'll notice the delta UV shift is still pushing magenta. So because of that, we would still have to add a quarter green in camera to make up for that magenta shift. And here it is the CRI readout when the light is set to 3200. You can see that channel R9 is still hurting even at 3200. However, R13 and R15 have pumped up, but still I would be kind of cautious using this on skin, knowing that the R9 channel is a tad low. Here's the spectrum of that. I'm gonna hold off on spectrum until we do the SSI comparisons. Okay, so now here's the readout when the light is set to 4300 Kelvin. It was actually giving us 4148 and there you'll see it's got a, a little bit of that magenta shift again. So to make up for that, we would have to add a half green in camera or throw a 1 8 plus green gel on the light because it's pushing magenta 
that bad. If we look at the CRI, when it's set to 4,300, that R12 is significantly down. Um, the skin tones are getting better though, right? The R9 is almost, is pretty much 95 at this point. R13 is 96, really good. R15 is pretty much 95, R9 is pretty, so I think at 4,300, now you're pretty safe for skin tones. Okay, now this is the readout when the light is set to 6,800 Kelvin. This is where it was not very uh, accurate. It was only giving us 6421 Kelvin and still a slight magenta shift, enough to add like half green in camera or still that 1 8 plus green gel onto the light. And if we look at those CRI numbers when it's set to 6800, you'll notice that R12 is still hurting. However, R9, R13, and R15 are all doing really well. That's pretty good for skin tones. But now let's back up here a bit because GVM has that claim that the light maintains exact level of brightness no matter what the color temp. Remember that? So remember, all of these readings were taken from the exact same point, three meter distance. When the light is set to 5,600 Kelvin, we were getting 538 foot candles. So if what GVM is saying is true, then we should consistently get 538 foot candles or at least somewhere in that vicinity, no matter what color temperature. When the light is set to 2,700 Kelvin, it drops pretty significantly in terms of output. We went from 538 foot candles to only 476 foot candles. That's quite a drop in output, in, in my opinion, okay? If that's not a big enough number for you, just look at the lux, right? 5,790 lux, when it's set to 5,600, drops down to 5,120 lux when it's set to 2,700. I mean, that number is too large to even consider, you know, a user error margin, right? In my opinion, just my opinion, especially when I know I stood in the exact same spot for all of these readings. When it's set to 3,200 Kelvin, now the brightness is 490 foot candles. So you're getting a little bit more, but you're still not getting that 538 like you do at 5,600. So now what about when we had it set to 4,300 Kelvin? Well, now we're getting somewhere. Now it's back to 524 foot candles, almost what we were getting at 5,600 Kelvin at 538. When the light was set at 6,800 Kelvin, now we actually get more output. Now the output jumps to 595 foot candles or 6,400 lux, all right? Now it's, before it was the brightest at 5,600 Kelvin, but now we know if we go beyond 5,600, if we max it all the way out to 6,800, we're gonna get the maximum amount of output. So now I wanna show what the light is doing when you use the pop-out dome, because GVM does make a little tiny dome for this, and you know, it's pretty nice. It's got the pretty typical uh, double break diffusion in there, so you can have the little one inside to, you know, fight hot spot. Then you get the quarter grid. I'm pretty sure it's a quarter grid on the outside, and then they even give you the 50 degree egg crate grid. Your output is gonna drop quite significantly. First First of all, it's gonna drop because you're not using the hyper reflector on it, right? So now the output, the most you're getting with it is 170 foot candles from that three meter distance. And this is at 5,600 Kelvin. Another reason why I consistently use my light, my color meter on set, because every different kind of diffusion cloth, and there's a lot of them, right? Just head on over to modernstudioequipment.com and check out their rag section, okay? Every single diffusion cloth is going to significantly affect the color temperature. And this is a prime example of this, right? It, before, when it was set to 5600 without the dome, it was pretty damn accurate. But now look, when we have it set to 5600, it's actually only giving us 5100. That is significant enough where we would have to either put an 82A filter on the camera lens or a 1 8 CTB gel on the light. Now, the last and fun thing I wanna do, like I was talking about the, the fixtures that have the capability of RGBA CL. My Roscoe Dash does have that capability. I did a full review on that. Uh, it is a game changer light. If you have the cash to buy all four, you can make a killer, killer fixture, right? The thing is amazing. Just one Roscoe Dash is equivalent to the output of four Aperture MCs. The, the thing is gnarly and it's RGBA CL. Almost always LED lights are really hurting in the tung when they're trying to replicate tungsten light because we just haven't gotten there in technology until these RGBA CL fixtures, right? So check this out. When the Roscoe is set to 2700, it was actually giving me 2809, but look at the UV Delta curve. It's perfect. 
It's friggin' perfect, man. That's just something to consider there, right? You're not gonna get some wicked green magenta shift. I mean, just look at these stats. It doesn't have any suggestions for us in terms of color correction. Now, for uh, lighting balance, it does, right? Because, you know, they're saying, well, technically, you're 100 degrees off, right? We had our reference point is 2700. The light's actually putting out 2809. So they're saying, hey, maybe put a 1.8 CTO gel on the light if you wanna get it exactly 2700. But the reality is, well, first of all, it's a Roscoe, right? So it has a wonderful built-in library for tungsten or daylight settings, uh, but also it is RGBACL. So you're gonna be very easy to just dial that in on the actual fixture, right? But the main point to point out is you're able to get those tungsten colors without any shift in the Delta UV curve, all right? So you're talking about, you can trust these RGBACL fixtures a lot more when it comes to how they're rendering skin tones when they're on those warmer color temps. Okay, so now let's check out the SSI readings. And we'll compare this 650B to industry standard lights and the color fidelity. Because as I was saying at the top of this video, a cool feature of this light is that source match option in the menus, which is really cool for people that don't have a color meter. But the SSI comparisons will show us just how accurate that feature really is. Here's what it's doing at 2700 Kelvin versus a industry standard fixture that is a real tungsten unit, okay? So here you can really see the differences. If you don't know what you're looking at here, the graph in the front, these bars, okay? This is the tungsten unit. And in the background is our GVM light. So you'll notice what th the most significant thing to take notice of is look this area. Where the GVM should be giving us colors, it's not, right? It's, it's not able to produce any colors in this entire region versus a real tungsten unit. And notice too how it has a nice gradual build, right? A real tungsten unit has this really nice gradual build and it never clips out. Whereas our GVM has a pretty wicked spike, like it, like it juts on the hot end, right? And it clips, right? This channel here definitely clips. This one clipped and this one damn near clipped out, right? So there's no gradual uh, build like you get with a real tungsten unit. Also look, they're, you know, they're missing colors here and they're missing a lot of the colors down here on this end. Okay, so now this is the GVM when it's set to 3200 Kelvin. You'll see this wicked blue spike versus a, 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 a real 3200 Kelvin tungsten industry standard source. Again, we have colors completely missing as well as this, this really hardcore blue spike here. When we go to 4300 Kelvin, here's what the GVM is doing. Again, crazy wicked spikes all over the place versus a real 4300 Kelvin standard source. And just look, there is, I mean, there's so many gaps in here. Um, we don't have any crazy spikes like what the GVM is doing. It's kind of all over the place at that 4300 Kelvin setting. Now here we are at 6800 Kelvin, wicked blue spike. We got two pretty gnarly hills here. And here it is compared to a, a standard 6800 Kelvin light source. Big differences going on. Again, we have these huge gaps where not any color is being reproduced. And then all of a sudden it just goes cow and it clips out. And now back here to the 5600 Kelvin, here's the comparison 5600 in the front versus what the GVM light is doing. So even when the GVM is set to 5600 Kelvin, it's still struggling to reproduce a lot of these colors that a true HMI is doing. So there's a lot to chew on when it comes to this 650B Pro, right? But look, it's only got a thousand dollar price tag. Me personally, despite the little color issues, you know, honestly, I still think it's a pretty good deal because of where it lands in the market. But it is pushing magenta, so that's something to be aware of. If you have a camera that can do tint control, Almost all cameras can do that nowadays. It's not that big of a deal, right? You just know, just push it a quarter, half, you know, j just push it a little green in camera. That's kind of the downside of having a light so affordable. If you can get through that little discrepancy, it's a really powerful light. We saw that in the spec comparisons. It's, it's stacking up nicely against its much costlier competition. And the reality is those lights probably, I mean, the Orion probably has pretty decent color rendering because of RGBACL, but you know, the Aperture 600X probably isn't perfect on the UV Delta curve either. Not to mention, as I've said multiple times in the past, as soon as you start diffusing any LED light or any lighting fixture, you're gonna get, you're gonna get shifts, right? You just are, because that's just the nature of the light 
being diffracted and diffused and everything going on with the molecules in the air, science that I'm not smart enough to talk about, but all I know is, yeah, almost always on any set where I've been on, yeah, man, I take the readings and I've never had a, a, a just a perfect UV reading. Never. It just doesn't happen. This is where the meter comes in clutch, man, because I don't know anything else that, uh, you know, certainly not any apps that I've messed with that are as accurate as this Siconic. You know, I like that they basically copied Aperture's uh, rigging system here with the Mafer clamp and the dovetail, the quick release system. However, it doesn't sit in there super secure, right? It feels just a tad janky to me. I mean, it sits a little crooked. You know, that is concerning because my OCD brain says to me, well, over time, that looseness of how it sits in the dovetail is only going to get worse over time. And normally that wouldn't be such a problem. However, uh, because it, you know, connects the cables directly out of the bottom, uh, I can't be able to set this directly on the ground like I can with my Nanlite Forza ballast. But again, as far as output goes, in my opinion, this light is a lot of bang for the buck. Now here's something else to consider, because with all of my Bowens mount mono lights, I don't walk around with these reflectors in the case. These usually are thrown in a closet somewhere. All of my mono lights, they all have Fresnels in the case. And the reasoning is because a Fresnel pretty much doubles the output of these Bowens mount mono lights. Using the Nanlite Forza Fresnel with it, I got 1,312 foot candles from a three meter distance to be exact. Now that's on par with an Aperture 1200D with its medium reflector attached. Granted, the 1200D is going to have a much wider beam angle, but again, this GVM is bicolor. The final thing I will say is for that $9.99 price tag, the build quality of this light is pretty dang impressive. And that smart dual fan system is a nice bonus. As always, links are below to further your own research. I would recommend tapping the like button on this YouTube video so YouTube will bookmark it and save it in your liked playlist. And that'll make it easier for you to find it later and you can use the chapters to jump to certain sections if you wanna do some more comparisons of your own. Let me know in the comments down below what you like about the GVM 650B Pro or better yet, what you don't like. Me personally, I would say, yeah, I would keep this in the dog times van, I would. If you're new here, be sure to smash that subscribe button and share this video with all of your indie filmmaking friends. I do a lot more than just gear reviews here, so be sure to check out my past 323 videos. And of course, thank you to the folks at GVM for sending out this SD650B Pro to get my honest opinions on it. Till next time, remember, keep shooting. The only way to get better is to keep going. For now, that is a wrap. You have to calibrate the meter for every setup, the same way you have to black shade your camera. Uh,